Let's play a game. Close your eyes. What do you think of when I say the word wrestling? Do you picture strong competitors? Intimidating builds? Tough fights? But what about fasting? Laxative abuse? Purging? Even though it's not often talked about, eating disorder linked behaviors are frequently used in the sport of wrestling without any penalty or intervention. Competitive wrestling's acceptance of harmful eating and weight loss habits is extremely dangerous for its participants, as it creates a culture that works as a catalyst to the development of serious eating disorders. Before every match, wrestlers are required to weigh in in order to determine under which weight class they will compete. Weight classes are typically separated by 6 to 10 pound intervals, such as an 114 pound weight class and 120 pound weight class. The weigh-in is therefore extremely important, as being even the tiniest amount above your desired weight class puts you into a heavier grouping. For example, weighing in at 114 and a half pounds would put a wrestler into the 120 pound weight class, meaning that they may be wrestling opponents up to 5 and a half pounds heavier than them. This difference in weight gives the opponent a significant advantage in the match, potentially damaging one's prospects of winning. In order to protect themselves from any disadvantages, wrestlers above their desired weight class often participate in extremely high intensity workouts or strict diets before their weigh-ins. Because upwards of 50% of an adult's body weight is water, exercise targeted at releasing large amounts of sweat is used as a strategy to quickly drop pounds of water weight. Therefore, wrestlers often participate in high-intensity cardio exercises, often while wearing multiple layers of clothing. Weight loss methods such as these severely dehydrate the wrestlers, making them more susceptible to serious health consequences such as blood clots and seizures. And I'd already been fasting um, for about six hours at that point. Another commonly used strategy by wrestlers to quickly lose weight is fasting prior to weigh-in. With no new calorie intake, wrestlers can more easily burn off excess calories until they have reached their desired weight. Some competitive wrestlers also self-induce vomiting or abuse laxatives after meals in an attempt to lessen their calorie input. Both laxative abuse and vomiting throw off one's electrolyte balance, which could ultimately lead to heart failure, kidney failure, or even death. Once weighed in, wrestlers are given a few pounds in weight allowance that they may fill before their match. For example, if a wrestler weighs in at 114 pounds and has a 2 pound weight allowance, they are still allowed to wrestle within the 114 pound weight class even if they are 116 pounds by the time of the match. Because of this flexibility, wrestlers often binge high calorie meals after weigh-in in an attempt to make up for any significant amount of calorie cutting they may have done beforehand. These practices of binging, purging, and calorie restriction are extremely dangerous to the wrestler's health, not only because of their physical effects, but also since they make wrestlers more susceptible to the development of eating disorders. Through a statewide survey of wrestlers, the State Health Registry of Iowa found that 1.7% of the wrestlers' answers to questions were consistent with all five criteria for bulimia nervosa, an eating disorder characterized by obsessive binging and purging of meals. The survey also found that the average wrestler lost 3.2 kilograms to compete and fasted 20 hours prior to weigh-in. Though they may be practicing unhealthy eating and weight loss habits mainly for competition purposes, the fact that the wrestler's actions mirror those exhibited by bulimics is concerning, as habits often manifest as character over time. Soon enough, a wrestler who purges before weigh-ins could begin purging after every meal, for mental illnesses such as eating disorders are very difficult to control and resist. Unfortunately, however, the sport of wrestling often promotes risky behaviors that are tied to eating disorders rather than condemns them. Coaches, as well as fellow teammates, often encourage wrestlers to participate in dangerous weight-cutting activities so as to be placed in weight classes which they are more likely to succeed in. The external pressure to practice bad habits is therefore strong, even if one knows how unhealthy they may be. Wrestlers may feel like they have to do everything they can to cut pounds in order to avoid disappointing their team. 
Additionally, due to the stigmas that are tied with mental illnesses such as eating disorders, people who struggle with them often do not seek the help they may need. This issue is even more prevalent among men due to the stigma that mental illnesses are a woman's problem. Fear of judgment or ostracization from their teammates and coaches may keep ill wrestlers from seeking help or treatment, which only exacerbates their issues in the long run. It's obvious that there must be changes made in wrestling culture in order to protect participants from developing life-threatening illnesses such as bulimia. The lack of acknowledgement of the severe consequences of fasting, purging, and extreme weight cutting practices puts more and more wrestlers at risk every day. Wrestling leagues, programs, and coaches should encourage healthier weight control methods and provide support for participants struggling with developed eating disorders. That way, wrestlers can enjoy their favorite sport in a safer and healthier way.